Hello, welcome to the fourth week lecture, uh, the first lecture of fourth week. Now, so far if we recall what we have done, we have been basically securing communication between a sender and a receiver, Alice and Bob so to say in several ways. So, our main concern was that there is a message that Alice wants to send to Bob and in such a way that an attacker Oscar is unable to know the meaning of the message even if he has access to the message. We have seen classical cryptography, we have quickly also seen the weaknesses of classical cryptography, we have se seen uh, block ciphers, so mainly private key cryptography and then we have seen RSA which is the public key cryptography. So, we have another problem uh, that is uh, somewhat different from communication uh, at least communication across space that is in some way communication across time. Now, suppose that Alice has an hard disk which she keeps and goes away and suppose that this hard disk is accessible to <coughs> more than one people. Now, after some time back, after some time Alice comes back, let us suppose after length of time Alice comes back and checks the same hard disk. What she asks is that whether anybody has tampered with the hard disk or not in her absence. Now, our question is that is it possible to secure this hard disk for Alice, so that at least she is sure whether uh, everything is all right. Now, there is another uh, question here, I mean like or someone may, may might say that of course, Alice can do this, I, Alice can uh, well check a, a keep a copy of the hard disk, the whole hard disk, take it with her and then when she comes back she can match bit by bit uh, with the uh, bit by bit the hard disk that she left with the hard disk that she has been carrying, but then it beats the purpose, it, it does not serve the purpose because uh, then Alice is carrying the same hard disk of same size, so she could have easily carried the whole hard disk from here and removed I mean whole data from here and removed whatever is over here. So, ideally what Alice would like to have is a small fingerprint of this hard disk and carry it with her and when she comes back after some time calculate the fingerprint again from this hard disk that she left behind and if this these fingerprints match she should be reasonably uh, reasonably sure that no one has tampered her hard disk. So, that is uh, something that we would like to see uh, whether uh, I mean something uh, we would like to see whether it is possible to do. There is another thing that is important when Alice is communicating to Bob, suppose Alice sends a message x. Now, she might be encrypting that message, but still when Bob gets the message, he gets something else in principle other than x. This x prime that Bob's get, Bob gets might be x itself or 
the attacker Oscar might be interfering with this message and might have changed the message. So, Bob definitely would like to know whether the message that he has obtained from Alice has been tampered with or not and in some way he would like to know whether the message that is allegedly sent, sent by Alice is really sent by Alice. So, we start the topic of this week's lecture which addresses these questions. So, we introduce cryptographic hash functions. A cryptographic hash function technically is a function from a space let us say x to another space let us say y such that x is very large possibly infinite and y is relatively small. We would like to see how small is possible keeping the security intact. So, we will be denoting hash functions by h. So, this is a hash function x to y and we have got certain names over here. Very often instead of message, we will call elements of x as data because in reality very often they will be data like as I have, I have, have been saying that it might be a whole hard disk of uh, Alice which she is leaving behind. So, that is data and the elements of y will be called message digests. or <coughs> authentication tags. Sometimes we may be referring to y as fingerprint of x. or hash value of x. All right. Now, some basic level of security what we want in a hash function. So, let us look at this. If the hash function h is secure, then given the pair x and y equal to h of x, it should be computationally infeasible to obtain another data x prime belonging to x such that x prime is not equal to x and h x is equal to h x prime. So, this is how we will get some kind of data integrity. So, what will happen for Alice if Alice has access to a hash function the data in our hard disk x which she wants to protect she will apply the hash function h on x and get y. This y is small much smaller than x and she will carry the y and when she comes back 
she has got she will look at the look at her hard disk that she has left with the data. So, data is x prime and then she will compute h x prime and she will match h x and h x prime. If she finds that both are same then with high reliability she will infer that no one has tampered with her data, but if they are not same then she will definitely be able to say that someone has tampered the data and so therefore, it will be very it must be very very difficult to find out an x prime such that x is not equal to x prime, but h x prime is equal to x. Now, we can move on to something more general from hash functions to hash families. What we can do is that we can create a class of functions which are dependent on a key. So, that whole class will be called an hash family and the key is like our usual cryptographic keys which will be exchanged between Alice and Bob and a particular hash function from the family will be uh, will be obtained by them. So, let us see uh, instead of a single hash function it is possible to consider a family of hash functions whose elements are individual hash functions determined by keys belonging to a predetermined key space. Now, formally we will define a hash family as a fourth tuple. So, we will have a a space of data that is x, then we will have a space of message digests or authentication tags which is y and we have a space of key and the family of functions. So, given a key k belonging to capital K Alice and Bob will be able to obtain a function in H which they, they will denote as H sub k and which will work for their uh, requirements. Now, it may, might be like this suppose Alice and Bob are communicating. Now, what Bob and Alice wants to ensure is that when they are sending the message nobody is tampering with it. So, what Alice does is that Alice takes the data ok first what they do is that they agree upon a key through a secret channel. Now, this has to be done by a, through a secret channel and since they have agreed upon a key both of them will have the hash function h sub k and now suppose Alice wants to send x to Bob, she sends a pair, she sends x and h x h sub k x this pair which we will denote by x y where y equal to h x. Now, Bob obtains this pair and now in reality Bob is not sure whether he has obtained this pair or a modification of this. So, that is why we are writing that Bob has obtained this and uh, this is not h k y this is y Bob has obtained this so 
what Bob does is that Bob computes H x prime and checks whether is it, it is equal h k x prime whether it checks that whether it is equal to this. What this hash function must guarantee me that if I do not know the key it will be computationally infeasible to find out a pair which is valid for this particular function. So, an attacker cannot produce a pair like this x prime y prime and send to Bob take it out. So, that Bob when checks with this equation will find that this equality holds. So, if such is the case then Alice and Bob has obtained some authentication. So, if whatever Bob gets ap Bob applies hash function that particular keyed hash function to the message and checks the message digest if they agree then Bob should be uh, quite certain that the message is all sent by Alice and no one else and Alice's message has not been tampered with. So, that is what we would like to achieve. What we see is that unkeyed hash functions are also in a sense fall within this same uh, same uh, uh, same uh, framework. We can always say that an, an unkeyed hash function comes from a hash family where the key space is singleton. Now, let us come to some notations and terminologies. All right. So, as we have already seen that a set of data x can be finite or infinite, but y is always finite and relatively small. Then if x is finite, then the family, then the function h from x to y is also called a compression function. We will be using this terminology very often later and we have already said that y is, a, is uh, the elements of y are called message digests or authentication tags and the number of even if x is finite then the number of elements in x is much larger than number of elements in y. So, of course, we will have this relationship always in fact, we will be having something else, something more stringent as this. That is number of elements in x will be twice more than twice the number of elements of y. And there is a concept of valid pair. If I give you a pair x y where x is an element of capital X and y is an element of capital Y, then we will say that x y is a valid pair if and only if y is equal to h x. So, this is also a terminology that is used very often. Now, some more terminologies by f superscript x y we will denote the set of all functions from x to y and very often the number of elements in x if x is finite will be denoted by capital N and number of elements in y will be denoted by capital M. And in that case the number of functions in f superscript x comma y will be m raised to the power n. Let us quickly have a look at this counting. So, we are considering all the functions from 
x to y and we are denoting that by f superscript x comma y and we have been told that the number of elements in capital X is n and the number of elements in capital Y is m. So, if we list all the elements in script capital X that is a domain, so we can list like this we come up to x sub capital N and what we see is that we can choose the image of x i s that is x 1, x 2 and so on in m ways each of the images can be chosen in m ways and therefore, the total number of choices is m into m into m capital N times m into m into m capital N times this gives me m raised to the power n. So, we have a huge space of m raised to the power n and within that space our hash families lie. So, any hash family just script f is, is a subset of f x y and these are called n m hash families. The last topic that we discuss in this lecture is security of hash functions. So, what has been found is that hash functions must have some properties to be secure and these properties uh, are formulated as problems. So, these problems are pre image, second pre image and collision. So, let us think in this way we have a problem called pre image. What is that problem? This problem states that I am given something, I am I have got the access to the hash function h and I have got I have been given a y. So, these are the things that are given to me and I have been told that find x such that h x equal to y. So, this means that in a way I have got a huge space x, I have got a relatively smaller set y and well I am given the function and I am given a y and I have been asked to find out x such that x is taken to y, this is pre image. Now, if a hash function has to be secure, then this pre image problem must be very difficult to solve. That is to say, it should not be possible to solve it in feasible time. Now, second pre image, second pre image is a problem which looks like pre image, but is slightly different from that.
here again we have a we have access to h the hash function and here I have been given a pair that is I have been given a pair which is so to say valid pair. So, I have given a pair such that h x equal to y and I am asked to find out another x that is a second pre image we denoted by x prime find x prime which is not equal to x such that h x prime is equal to h x. So, if we write a di if we draw a diagram it will be like this that again I have this space x and I have this space y. I have been given a y and a pre image of that. So, I know that h x is equal to y I am asked to find something else some other element in x such that this also maps to y h x dash should be equal to y. So, that is the second pre image. Now, lastly the third problem which should be difficult to solve or so to say practically impossible to solve that is called collision. It says that I have something I have access to something much less I have just access to h I just know the hash function and I should not be able to compute two distinct uh, data sets x and y sorry x and x prime I should not be able to find x and x prime which are distinct whose hash values are same. If I am able to do that that means that I have got a collision, but I should not be able to do this. So, that is collision. Now, at the end if for a hash function it is not possible to find or if it is not possible to solve pre image problem it is called pre image resistant hash function. If for a hash function it is not possible to find second pre image then it is called a second pre image resistant hash function and lastly if for a hash function it is not possible to find a collision it is called a collision resistant hash function. We end today's lecture here we will consider these properties in details in the forthcoming lectures. Thank you.